APIs are everywhere, and as developers, we're going to use them day in and day out to pass information and data between the products and services that we create and maintain. And that's why in this video, we're going to look at how we can create a REST API using the AWS CDK, as well as DynamoDB, API Gateway, and Lambda. So by the end of this video, we're going to have created a REST API that allows us to create, retrieve, and delete blog posts from a DynamoDB database. We're also going to add API key authentication to it so that any unauthorized requests get returned with a 403 error. And then finally, at the end of this video, we're going to test every everything we've done using Postman. So just before we actually jump into the video and start the tutorial, there's a few things we need to take care of. First of all, of course, you need an AWS account. You'll also need the AWS CLI and CDK configured for this tutorial. So make sure you go and set those up if you don't already have them. You'll also need an AWS CDK project for this tutorial. In this case, I'm using a brand new one. You could use an existing one if you wanted to. And finally, we'll need a way of testing the API we build. You could use something like curl from the terminal if you wanted to, but I highly recommend using Postman, as I mentioned earlier, as it gives us a really nice UI for testing APIs. So now let's jump into VS Code and let's start creating our REST API. The first thing we're going to do is define our DynamoDB table, which we can do with this code right here. So with this code, we're going to define a new table from DynamoDB. We're going to have our partition key named PK with an attribute type of string. We're then going to set the removal policy to destroy. So when we destroy the stack, the table gets deleted with it. And then finally, we're setting the billing mode to pay per request or on demand. Now with our database table defined, we're now ready to move on to defining our API itself. So the first thing we're going to do is define our new REST API, which we can do with this code right here. So with this code, we're defining a new REST API from API Gateway. We're then giving it a name of just REST API. Of course, you could call this whatever you wanted. Um, I'm not very imaginative with my names, clearly. Uh, and then we're just saying some default cause preflight options. And then finally, we're saying the API key source type to be in the header. So let's just quickly import everything here that we need. And the next thing is to create our API key. So we can do that with this code here. This just uses the API key construct from API Gateway to create our API key. It's worth noting here that if you wanted users to create their own API keys through something such as a dashboard, you'd probably need to use a Lambda function along with some various SDK calls to create those API keys and associate them to a usage plan. In this case, we're just going to be generating the one API key. So this method is fine. But like I said, if you wanted users to create their own, this method probably wouldn't be the best approach. Now with our API key defined, we're ready to look at usage plans and defining one of those for our API. Usage plans can do many things such as monetization of APIs, rate limiting and more, but we're interested in the API key authentication part of them. What that allows us to do is to pass in an API key to the requests. And then if that API key is not included, then it returns the 403 for us. And if it is included, then it gets passed through to the API. So now let's actually create our usage plan by using this code right here. So in this code, we are going to define a new usage plan using the usage plan construct. Then we give it a name, which is just usage plan again, on create as creative as ever. Then we pass in our API as well as the API deployment stage, which will just default to the production version. And then finally, with our usage plan now defined, we can associate our API key to it. So we can do that just by going usage plan dot add API key, API key. As simple as that, our API key is now associated with the usage plan. So at this point, just to quickly recap, we have our DynamoDB table, we have our API, we have our usage plan, and then we have an API key associated with that usage plan. So with that base of the API now configured, we're now ready to start looking at the endpoints and methods themselves and the Lambda functions that will be triggered when we hit those methods. So first of all, let's look at defining our Lambda functions and the logic within them for the actions we want to perform for the various endpoints. So because our API is going to have two endpoints, slash posts and slash posts ID, we're going to have two Lambda functions. So we need to define both of those now. So to define those, we're just going to use this code right here. And then inside this code, let's just quickly go through it. We have a Node.js function for both of them. We give them a, an ID, so post lambdas in this case, and post lambda down here. We then pass it an entry point, which is the function file itself that will be run the code. So in this case, it's resources, endpoints, post.ts and post.ts. We then say we're using the handle function and we pass in our database table name as an environmental variable for us to use in the function. So then finally, with our Lambda functions now defined, not written, but defined, we're just going to grant them read and write permissions to our database. So we're going to do grant read and write data post Lambda, and we're also going to do post Lambda underneath it. So now we have our Lambda functions defined and they've been given read and write access to our database for creating and retrieving data from it. So with the Lambda functions now defined, we're now at a point where we can write the Lambda functions as well as the handlers that we'll call within those Lambda functions. So the first thing we need to do is now create all the directories and folders for the Lambda function code and the handlers that we called within that. So to do that, let's create a new resources folder in the root of our project. 
Then inside that, we're going to create two more folders, one for endpoints and one for handlers. Inside endpoints is where we're going to put the Lambda functions code themselves. So for the one for the posts and one for the post. But in the inside of the handlers is where we're going to have the actual functions, which is going to create the posts, retrieve the posts, delete the posts, etc. So inside the handlers folder, we're going to create a new one called posts. And now let's create the files themselves. So the first one inside the endpoints is going to be posts.ts. And then we're going to have posts.ts. Then inside handlers posts, we're going to create create.ts. And then we're going to have get one.ts get all.ts and finally delete.ts. So across these six files is everything we are going to have to populate to make our API have the logic required to do the actions we want. So we have our two endpoints here for our Lambda functions, which line up with what we defined here, post.ts and post.ts right there with the same file path. And then here we have our four actions, which are going to be in these two endpoints. So we obviously have create and delete, get all, get one. So now we can actually look at writing these functions, but before we can do that, we need to install some NPM packages, which is what we'll be using inside the functions. So the packages we're going to install is the AWS SDK client and lib Dynamo DBs, as well as the types packages for AWS Lambda. We're then also going to create a types file in the root of the project, which is where we're going to define a type for the post data that we'll be creating and retrieving from the database. So to do that, create a new types.ts file in the root of the project, and then define a new interface inside it called iPost with a title of string, description string, author string, and a publication string. So these are all of the fields that we'll be defining in the database for each of these records. With our NPM packages now installed and our types now created, we're now ready to actually write our handlers and endpoints. So let's start by writing the post.ts endpoint. So to do that, we're just going to drop in this code right here. We're going to get these errors at the moment, but that's just because we haven't defined these functions. We'll come to them in a second when we define them in here, then these errors will be resolved. But for now, you can see that we bring in the event parameter ID. So because this is the post endpoint, this will be post slash ID. And that ID that we pass in after the slash when we call the API endpoint will be brought in here is this ID value here. So of course, if the ID is not defined and people just call post directly, then we will return an error to them that says missing path parameter ID to let them know they need to provide that ID. If they do, however, provide the ID, we then do a switch based on the method they used in the request. So if it's a get request, we then do a get one to retrieve that ID. And if it's a delete request, we then delete the post with that ID. Anything else, we return a invalid HTTP method with a 400. So with our post endpoint now written, we can look at doing our posts endpoint, which is a very similar layout as what we just did for the post endpoint. But this time there's no ID because it's just slash posts. And depending on the method, we either do a get all or we do a create. If they do a get request to the slash post endpoint, we then retrieve all of the posts we have in the database. And if they do a post request to the slash post endpoints, we then use the body of the request to create a new post in the database. Again, anything else gets responded to with an invalid method error. So of our two Lambda function endpoints now written, posts and posts, we can turn our attention to the handlers that we need to create for these functions to run. So the first one we're going to write is the create handler. So inside this function, we're just going to use this code here. And you can see here, we bring in DynamoDB, put command, the random UUID, and the type that we defined earlier. We create a new DynamoDB client right here. We then generate a random UUID inside the function. We then check if the body is defined from the request. If the body is defined, we carry on with the function and then we create our post in the database using the put command here and we return a 200 saying the post was created. If the body was not defined, however, we then return an error to the user saying missing body. So that's our create handler written. So we can just close that for now. The next one we're going to do is the delete handler. So now we're going to use this code here. And in this code, it's very similar, but this time we pass in the ID because remember this is going to get called on the slash post endpoint where they need to provide an ID. So we pass in that ID from the request. We then send a delete command to our database, which passes in the ID of the post to delete the matching post of that ID. We then return a 200 to them with just the message post deleted to inform them that it was deleted. And that is our delete handler written. So the next one we're going to look at defining is the get all handler. So for this, you can see we define a new DynamoDB client again. We then just do a scan command to retrieve all of the items in the database before stringifying them and sending them back to the user. If you were deploying this API for real and at scale, you'd probably not want to use the scan command as that'd be quite inefficient and you'd rather use something say as a query command and you'd also allow you to filter the items. 
But for this example, we're just going to use a scan command to keep it simple. And with that, that finishes our get all handler. So we can just close that now. And the last one we need to write is our get one handler. So let's just drop the code in for that. And it's quite a similar pattern that we're following of our handler functions here. So this time we pass in the ID because again, this will be called on the slash post method where they need to provide the ID. And then inside the function, we just use the get command of DynamoDB to retrieve that item with the matching key from our database. If there is no item found because they've passed in an invalid ID, for example, we then just return a 404 with a post not found. Otherwise, we do return the post of a 200 request to them. So with that, we've now finished writing all of our handlers and endpoints and all of the logic required for them. You can see that the errors that we had earlier with the missing files have now been resolved and everything is now good. So with that, we're now ready to move on to actually defining the endpoints on our API. Because remember, at this point, we have an API, we have an API key, we have a usage plan. We also have the lambdas that we're going to run, but we don't we haven't connected them together yet. So what's going to connect them together is the endpoints. So the endpoints is going to be slash posts and slash posts ID as we defined earlier. So at the bottom of our CDK stack here, we're just going to do the definition for our two endpoints. So we're going to do const posts which is just api.root add resource posts. So this is what would give us slash posts at the end of our API URL. And then we're gonna do posts add resource ID in curly brackets. The curly brackets is what defines this as a variable. So you'll remember inside our post Lambda function that we had this event path parameter ID. These curly brackets is what defines that as a path parameter. And you can see we're adding it onto posts. So that was what would make it slash post slash ID. If we were to do this as API root instead of posts, it would just be slash ID, which isn't what we want. So again, we have slash posts here, and then we have slash posts slash ID underneath it. With our two endpoints now defined on our API, and we actually have those resources ready to call, we now need to define two Lambda integrations. So although we have the lambdas, we can't just directly connect them to the API resources. We have to create lambda integrations first. So to define those lambda integrations, we're just going to drop this code in. And you can see here, it's actually quite simple. All we do is we use the lambda integration from the API gateway CDK library. With that, that's now created our post integration and our post integration, one for each of the lambda functions that we defined. And now we're actually at a point where we can link everything up together and we will have a working API. So to combine everything together and actually give us a working API, we now need to define the methods on the resources and the endpoints we defined. So you can see here we have our posts resource and our posts ID resource here as well. What we now need to do is add the methods to do's. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop in this code here. And you can see here we do posts add method get and then the lambda integration that we want to call. In this case, it's post integration. And then we also say API key required true. This is important because if you miss this part out, then the API key won't be enforced and you'd be able to call this endpoint without an API key. So again, we just take the resource that we have. So in this case, say post the method we want to add to that resource, in this case, a get method and then the Lambda integration we want to call. In this case, it's the post integration. And then we just make the API key required. So you'll notice that the methods that we add to the resources here will line up with what we defined in the switch statement inside the post handler. So for example, if we look at post.ts, you can see we have the get method and the delete method. And in here we have for the post Lambda integration, the get method and the delete method. So what will happen when a request is sent? When a request is sent to say the slash post endpoint here, it will then say what method have you sent? If you've sent a get or a post method, it will trigger this integration that we've defined here. So then that will get passed through to the Lambda function here, and then the correct handler will be called and the logic will be carried out from there. And with that, we've now finished defining our entire stack for our API. The last thing that we need to add in is just a output to the terminal to give us our API key ID. This is important because without this, we won't be able to get the API key value using the CLI in a moment. So then we wouldn't actually be able to send any requests to our API. You could also, of course, get the value from the dashboard, but I find this just a bit easier to do it this way. So then I got to log into the dashboard and go through there. So with all of this now defined, our DynamoDB table, our REST API, our API key, our usage plan, linking the API key to the usage plan, both of our Lambda functions, granting the read and write permissions to our Lambda functions, adding the resources to our API, creating the Lambda integrations, and then finally defining all of the methods that we want to use across these two resources or endpoints here. 
and then adding out the API key ID. So we're now at a point where we can deploy our CDK stack. To do that, run the CDK deploy command in your terminal, accept any prompts that you're given for it, just like so. And then when this finishes, you'll be given an API key ID and I'll cut back to then and then we can look at how we get the API key value from that. And then we'll use that in our postman to test the API endpoints we've just created. So I'll see you in a second. So my CDK stack has just finished deploying and you can see here that we have my API key ID, which was just deployed along with my API URL right here. So we'll use that URL in a moment once we have the API key value to test our API. But first of all, we need to look at actually getting our API key. So before we look at getting our API key, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy all of this out just so I can clear my terminal. So I'm just going to dump this into a new tab here. So let me just clear my terminal so you can see what's going on. So then we're going to run the command here, which is AWS API gateway, get API key, API key ID, include value. So then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop in this ID here, like so, and then we're going to run that. And then you can see here we're output this. So this is the line we're interested in here, which is the value for my API key. So now at this point, we can actually head over to Postman and test our API that we've created. So we'll bring over Postman. And then what we want to do is we just want to run through the different endpoints. So the first thing we want to do is test our API. So we're going to use the slash post endpoint that we define. And we want to check that if we don't pass in an API key header, then we're returned to 403. So I'm just going to send that request. And you can see here, we are indeed returned a 403 forbidden. So the next step is to add in an X hyphen API hyphen key header. So you can see that here. And then we pass in the value that we retrieved from the CLI like so. So if I pass that in like that, now I run this request, we returned an empty array. This is because of course there is no data in the database. It's a blank database. So there are no posts to retrieve, but it's good that we got the 200 response and not an error. So the next thing we're gonna do is actually create a post. So let's change this from a get request to a post request. And then we're gonna go into the body tab and we're gonna add in some example text. So we're gonna select raw and then we're gonna add in this JSON, which is a title, example, post one, description, blank, author, me, and then some date is the string for publication date. So now let's send that request, post create. So that's a good sign. So now if we go back to our get request on the slash post endpoint and we run that, you can see that we are actually returned the post that we just created a moment ago. So the next thing we're going to test is the slash post slash ID endpoint to retrieve a single post. So you can see here that we have an array of posts. So let's now take this ID and let's say we want to retrieve just that post. We can do slash and then we can pass in the path parameter ID because remember we're using that as a variable. So let's do get with that ID in there, send. And you can see here, we're not returned an array anymore. We are returned just the singular version of that ID. Let's now also test if we pass in an invalid ID to make sure we return the correct response for that. So let me just get an invalid ID by deleting a part out. We send that request and as you can see here, we're returned a 404 not found, post not found, which is exactly what we wanted to see. Let me just undo that. And then the next one and the final one we're going to test is a delete request. So if I send a delete request to that ID with that path parameter, it should now delete my post. So we send it post deleted. We can make sure this has been deleted by doing a get request to our slash post endpoint to get all of the posts. So if I just do that quickly, you can see here we're once again given an empty array. So the post has indeed actually been deleted. And that's it. If your test gave the same output as mine or the same response statuses and codes as mine with different data, then you now have a working REST API using DynamoDB, API Gateway, and AWS Lambda all deployed via the AWS CDK. Don't forget to run CDK Destroy to remove your CDK stack from AWS after you're finished with this tutorial and example project, just so you don't build up any costs that might get associated with these resources. And if you'd like to see the written version of this video, then you can head over to my blog and you can read it all there with the example code included as well, ready for you to copy and paste and use within your own project so you can follow along at your own pace. Also, if you'd like to see the full example code of this project, then make sure to head over to my GitHub where you can see all of my CDK examples in one repo and you might even find some other projects that you'd like to dig into. So I hope you found this video helpful and until next time, thank you for watching. Bye.